Hello and welcome to my talk, a practical algorithm with performance guarantees for the art gallery problem. Um, and we are at Utrecht University. Okay, this is joint work with my uh, former master's student, Simon Hengefeld. Um, okay, so let's first start to explain the art gallery problem so that just everyone is on the same page. In the art gallery problem, we've given a polygon, maybe with holes, without, maybe without holes. And then we place these uh, guards, which we just model as points, and we want them to see everything. So what does it mean to see? So this guard can see this point because the line segment is contained, but it can't see that point because the line segment is not contained. Um, so, and then this guard sees this entire region, and these four guards see together the entire gallery. And um, if you uh, have a look a little bit at it, uh, then you can see that you also need at most uh, at least four guards, because these crosses here um, cannot be guarded um, simultaneously. So it's impossible to guard two crosses at the same time, and that implies that you need at least four guards. This uh, this is an optimal guarding for that polygon, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, um, and let me do a little bit of a of a uh, literature recap on the art gallery problem. So there are two types of algorithms, theoretical ones and practical ones. And the only uh, algorithm that works reliably uh, in finite amount of time for the art gallery problem uses, uses algebraic methods. So it was Sharir who observed that you can do this with algebraic methods. And um, yeah, and there's, but this is completely impractical. And then on the, on the practical side, there are algorithms that may run forever, and they are, yeah, a little bit, you know, uh, 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 trying things out, so to say. They, one would say heuristics, although I, I don't like the term so much. Um, but they don't have performance guarantees, right? They're they're very straightforward. Let's see if this works, and then then it works. Uh, and they're reliable. So they while they may run infinitely long, they're reliable. Um, but yeah, we, we can't really have any runtime um, guarantees on those. They actually, they aren't since on which they run forever. And somehow the problem is that there, there are these two worlds, these practical algorithms, which somewhat work and they give reliable results, but they could run forever. Um, and we don't really understand their runtime behavior. And then there are these, these theoretical algorithms that, that in practice would run forever, but in theory have a finite runtime. Um, that's yeah, somewhat optimal in, in some theoretical sense, but somehow, you know, there there is this big gap and and there's this a canyon and in this canyon there's a fire and um, we can't really get over. But here in our work, what we do is we build a bridge and we have a party on 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 that bridge together. So so this is what what I want you to remember what what, what this paper is about. That's the story of that paper. Okay, so what is that fire? Um, that fire is this little fire, it's this little polygon here, um, where um, on each of these green lines there must be exactly one guard because we have these little pockets here. And then um, the guard on the left green line together with the middle guard, they together need to see those two pockets. And thus the, the uh, middle guard is uh, bounded by the blue curve and in the same way, it's bounded by the red curve, um, and it must also be on the green line, so it really must be on this intersection. And as you know, usually the intersection of two quadratic curves is an irrational number, and what that means is that in order to guard this uh, polygon optimally with three guards, you need irrational numbers. And it, it's it's annoying because, so we don't want to use algebraic methods, but this this results as well, you kind of have to. And, and then there's this bigger fire, uh, so this is uh, uh, showing that the art gallery problem is uh, ER complete, and uh, somehow this means okay, maybe you, there, this isn't an isolated phenomenon; it can really happen all over the place. So, so that's like the theoretical side of it. Why, why it seems we need these algebraic methods, but then let's look at the practical methods. Uh, what they do, they they somehow uh, go very different route. Right? They don't use algebraic methods, but uh, if you have a polygon, then you, they just generate. These, these potential guard position, we call them candidates. And then in one way or another, they're just among those candidates, they, they pick the guards that they find optimally. 
So specifically, they uh, built this um, uh, integer linear program, which optimized the number of uh, guards um, under the constraint that the whole polygon must be seen. So, and then they solved this ILP, and ILP solvers are in practice very fast. Um, and then what uh, 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 we have to know about this is that in order to buy, build an ILP, you know, you can't really, you can't really formulate this condition here in an ILP. So what instead you do, you have all of these witnesses, and for each witness and for each guard, you compute, well, can this guard see this witness, and, and now you can formulate an ILP because every witness gives you one constraint and you don't have an infinite number of constraints. So that's what happens on, on the practical side and the result would actually be correct because you can check if, if everything is seen and if not, then you add an additional witness uh, or you may need to add additional guards. And so you go forth and back between um, this ILP and then refining the geometry um, and, and until you until you stop. Okay, but let's say we, we are going back to the theoretical side, and and you you know you you want to do the same approach, but you you um, you, you want to have performance guarantees. Then we want to have these candidates, and a simple way, the simplest thing that you could think for for the candidates is just having a really fine grid. Um, and and in previous work we showed that. Uh, that this can give some approximation guarantees and using smooth analysis, this could actually contain the optimal solution. But when you think about this, these are way too many candidate points, right? You have like a enormous, uh, like exponential number of points here to, uh, um, for this polygon um, just to get some optimal solution. But um, so you somehow want to have performance guarantees, but you don't want to have such a huge number of of candidates because that's not really that useful either. Um, and what we do here is we, we, we go back to practice and we just think and first principle, if you want to have the candidates, where would you reasonably place them? Okay, just think, uh, let's just try to think from it from an outsider's perspective who doesn't know anything. Um, and and then what you can see is if, if I'm here close to reflex vertex, right? I have this blue point and I have this green point. And then the visibilities uh, are very different if they are close to reflex vertex. But if you look at the, the difference of visibility up here, that's kind of negligible. And the same here, right? This is the, the, it just sees a teeny tiny bit more. And, and that leads us naturally to this idea that if I'm close to reflex vertex, then I should have there more guard, more guard candidates. And if I'm kind of far away from all, uh, the reflex versus then I would need less. And, and that idea uh, enables us to find a polynomial size candidate set. Um, so the idea is, okay, you're close to reflex vertex, more guards further away, less guards. Um, and, and the way to do this is we just shoot these rays into all directions, uh, and then we take all intersection points, and then this will um, more or less satisfy everything we need. Um, okay, so now go, let's go to, back to theory. We, we thought like from first principles, what would we, what we would require? Um, and we, we want to prove something about it, right? This was just like an abstract idea. And the way we prove something about it is we, we introduce this concept of um, augmented and um, guards and reduced guards. I forgot what you call it. Well, God, that can see less. So this guard here, right, I, is allowed to see a little bit around the corner by some small angle delta. And here, this guard is like limited. It's like, it could see up till here, but then we block its vision by some angle of delta. We remove some delta cone. Um, and then what you can see is, we, we can now look at the optimum number of guards, um, depending on how much enhancement or by how much we're diminishing these guards. And obviously, if we enhance them a lot, you know, we need less guards. But if we enhance, uh, if we diminish them, we need more guards because these guards are less powerful. Uh, and this goes in steps. All right. So this is a, uh, uh, um, continue, or I guess this is a step function because we always have a discrete number of guards. Um, and the assumption that we're going to use is that there is no jump around zero. I mean, zero is just normal guards. 
guards that are now are enhanced or diminished. And our assumption is that around zero, um, for some small delta, um, nothing happens. And then our theorem says that under this condition, um, we can do a polynomial time preprocessing, and then we do we solve one ILP, and and then we will get the optimal number of guards. Um, note that we can't check this condition here. Um, but at least this gives us the first uh, thing that uh, the first theoretical uh, guarantees that doesn't use algebraic methods, which we know are impractical, but uh, it gives us some, some algorithm that actually could be implemented. Um, and, and we implemented some kind, we implemented this, but to make it fast, we, we also added up some, some more tricks. Okay, so that was the theory side of it. Um, and yeah, to, to let me give you a quick proof idea. So let's think about, we, we have this arrangement and then we allow here, uh, uh, we can think about uh, these faces in here and let's pick one of those faces. And there we have um, maybe the optimal solution if we diminish these guards. And then we, we move this guard, uh, this optimal guard here to one of the vertices of this face. So one of the vertices of the face must be a vertex in the arrangement. And in that way, we have not uh, uh, changed uh, the size of G. And, and there's these new blue guards here, uh, we will argue that they give us, that they actually see everything. And the argument, uh, and under normal vision. So that, that would imply that actually we have an optimal guard solution. And the idea is very simple. Namely, okay, we moved this this uh, uh, optimal guard by some angle, which is at most delta by construction of this arrangement. Um, and that me, but since this guard was diminished and this guard has full vision, um, this angle must be smaller than delta as well. But then, you know, this brown guard, it couldn't even see that thing that now the blue guard isn't seeing because the brown guard was diminished. Um, and in that way, we can show that the green guards, uh, the blue guards actually see everything. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the core idea. Okay, um, now we, we go back to the practice. So we, coming from first principles and looking how algorithms run in practice, we found we could actually prove something about them by slightly adapting them. And now we want to see, does it work in practice? Um, and so we, we uh, in practice, we have to do a few adaptions here. So we use uh, for candidates and guards, we use both vertices and and these faces. Uh, so we can say such a face can also be a guard. Uh, and we say we, we prefer we prefer just point guards, but sometimes if it's unavoidable, we use these faces. But then we know our grid was not fine enough. And the problem is we don't know how fine our grid needs to be. Um, and then we make things even faster by uh, because we iteratively then refine the grid. Um, we make it even faster by just starting from a very, very simple grid because we're going to refine it anyway. And the way that we refine it is, um, oh yeah, so we, we, as I said, we built this ILP, then maybe this would be the solution for this ILP. And then we just uh, cut this, uh, the, the guard that we used, we cut it into four and we keep doing this until this is so fine that the ILP will say, okay, actually we can't do with one face, so let's better use two faces and these faces together uh, see everything. Uh, sorry, uh, we use two points instead of a face, and then they see everything. Um, and let me show you how this works uh, in on real life data. So this is uh, a polygon that we got from from reference database, and uh, this is what our algorithm outputted here. These orange faces they're used as guards. Um, these green faces are some faces that our algorithm did not manage to see, um, or so only partially. And then we refine and refine and refine. And after a few iterations, we actually come to a solution where we only use point cards and we know this is the optimal solution. And so we usually fairly quickly found the optimum. And um, yes, I think we also were beating current existing benchmarks. And there was one algorithm that claims to be better. Unfortunately, they have not published their uh, code, so we cannot compare. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so we have this fire, 
um, that I told you about. We have this little polygon here, which needs irrational numbers. Um, I told you at the beginning, and th that file we also uh, get rid of because uh, we run this algorithm as well on, on this polygon, which does not satisfy uh, 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 the assumption of the theorem that I showed you. And let me just run it for a few iterations here, and we get closer and closer to the optimal solution. Um, sometimes, okay, we pick larger faces, um, but yeah, we get very quickly to the optimal solution. And the nice thing is that we can then plot the distance to the optimal solution because we know the optimal solution and it goes very quickly, very uh, uh, down a lot. So after 100 iterations, it's down to two to the minus 50. Um, so here it, the error exponentially uh, diminishes, which is, which is very nice. Um, so one of the theoretical question is, could we show that the Hausdorff distance always converging to zero and maybe we can say something about the speed of convergence. Okay, so we had a little party uh, on the art gallery problem, that's connecting theory and practice, which I think is is a fun thing to do. And uh, yeah, this is joint work with Simon Hengelfeld. Um, and thank you for your attention.